Christ be Jesus and Mary. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The first words that our Lord had the apostles preach. And elsewhere he will say, repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. <coughs> Today's saint experienced that, knew that, understood that from her various earliest years. Saint Maria Goretti. Who lived a very devout life, very closely in union with Christ from her very earliest years. In fact, she would walk barefooted for quite some distance to go to Mass on Sundays. And she would pray, she prayed continually every day. In fact, it was just a much her mind, her whole heart was focused on our Lord from the very beginning. She came from a, a farming family. In fact, they had moved from northern Italy down to just south of Rome in a place called Netuno along the Mediterranean Sea. Hoping to make it better there. But her father was able to fight, was hired for a, to work on a farm there, and they lived in a small little house there. But the farmer, but the owner was not satisfied. As hard as her father worked, and as devout as he was, and how, as hard as he worked, he couldn't produce enough. It wasn't enough, for the, and so he called in another, another man and his husband, sorry, his son, to work with them on the farm, and they lived in the same house. <clears throat> in order to produce enough to satisfy the owner. And the father, Maria's father, worked so hard he developed cholera and died at a rarely young age. And now the family, Maria was the eldest of six, were left under the, under the tutelage as it were. The ownership as it were, not the ownership exactly, but I mean they were under the direction, if you will, of the Serenelli, so were the two that lived with them. And the son, Alessandro, of course, by this time Mary, Maria was now reaching 12 years old, took a disordered a liking to Maria and sought her. <coughs> and she refused him. And she kept refusing. Till finally, when she was just about to reach the age of 12, he accosted her, and as then he began stabbing her, the others had gone out to work out on the farm after lunch, and she was cleaning the house and seeing after her baby sister. And Alessandro came after her with an ice pick, and, and when she kept refusing, she kept her distance. He finally went after her with an ice pick, and he stabbed her several times several times in the back and 14 times in the chest. And as he is stabbing her, she was crawling out. See, she wasn't thinking of herself. She cried out, you would expect, oh, don't stop, you're hurting me. No, she didn't. She said, stop, no, you will go to hell. She was concerned for Alessandro's soul. You will go to hell. And of course, it was to no avail. She was left there on the floor, just at the door of the house. Alessandro ran and hid under the stairwell. It's an, it was an, it's an external stairwell. So he hid under the stairwell. And the others came in and found her bleeding, of course. And the trip to the hospital was, again, rather lengthy in a, in a horse-drawn carriage. So she lingered for two days. <clears throat> but needless to say, she couldn't survive. But before she died, she was asked, do you forgive your assailant? And she said, yes, I forgive him. I want him to be happy with me in heaven. Again, I repeat, she was concerned for his soul. And in fact, when she was already in heaven, she pursued it still because he, will, he of course, was captured and imprisoned. 
and remain languishing in prison, refusing to repent. And she appeared to him in a dream, holding out to him 24 lily stalks. Now, <clears throat> whatever conversation there was between them, there we don't know. What exactly is, do those 24 stalks mean? We don't really know, but something happened there. Because when he woke up from that dream, he repented. And he confessed. And a short, not long after, he was released on good behavior, and he led, from then on, a reclusive, penitential life. As an oblate to the Capuchins. <clears throat> and thus led, himself led a very holy life from there on. But you see there already, that's how attuned Maria was at such a young age. And what an example she is for, in particular for our youth today. Of one who maintained her virginity, maintained her modesty, and won the martyr's crown. And thus, of course, one sainted, in fact, her mother was present at her canonization in 1950. <clears throat> so we see what an example we have here and how much it's needed. One who everything, all that mattered was the kingdom of heaven, which, which he was already experiencing, even here in this life how close she was to Christ, how she loved him. That's all that mattered, to the point even of giving up her life, and to the point even of bearing that concern for her assailant, her murderer. That all that mattered, that he would be happy with her in heaven. Praise be Jesus and Mary.